Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about color gradients in Harmony. And you can create gradients with bitmap or vector layers, but I would recommend using vector layers for this. So to start off, I'm going to go down to my timeline, hold down plus, and create a new drawing layer. And in this case, I'm going to go all vector and add and close. Uh, next up, over in this area, I'm going to create a color palette. So this is the color panel. And so first we have the default color palette right here. And we, we you could work with that, but I just always recommend clicking on this plus button under palettes and creating a new one. I'll just leave it as new since this is just a video tutorial. And so I'll give you a new palette. So we have this black color to start off with. And the, the next step is I'm going to create a gradient. So I'm just going to click plus. It'll create a new color. I double click on the color, get to our normal breakout window. And with our normal breakout window, we have down here, you can choose from a solid color or a gradient. So all you need to do is click on gradient and this will show up here below. And remember you can switch to the multiple wheels mode if you want more adjustments to this. So I can click on multiple wheels and get a little bit more control. And that is still available, that, that gradient slider. So if I click on this, uh, this works very similar to Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, this will kind of feel pretty natural here. So this first color, I just click on that. And let's say I want this to start out as a red. And then for this next color, it's black. And I'll click on that and have it go to um, a, let's do um, a color like that. Okay. And if I move these sliders, you can see, you can change the fall off of the gradient there. Um, if you want to add a new color within the gradient, I just click in this empty area, just like Photoshop underneath. That gives me a new slider, and I can just change the color on that. And you can see that adds a um, third color in there. And if you want to remove it, I just click on it and then just drag down. So drag down, and it's gone. And you can add a bunch of those in there. Um, next, we have linear versus radial. So I'm going to stick with linear today, but if you look at this preview, radial will look like that. So you have that option as well. And I'll just click away from it, and we have our gradient. And I'll just name this. All right. So in this drawing layer, I'm going to be in my line art layer. And just using the black color, I'm going to use the... Just to make this quick, I'll, I'll use the rectangular tool. Remember when you're drawing, you can use the, the brush, the pencil, or this tool right here. And so I'm gonna create a rectangle right here. I'll make a, an ellipse and I'll hold shift to make it a circle over here. And then for the last one, I'll use the line tool. So I'll make a triangle. So with the line tool, you just click and drag. And it does a pretty good job, especially if you just zoom in a little bit of snapping with the next point. So I can just click and drag right here and if I hold shift, you can get it to a 45 um, or a 90 degree angle right there. And one last trick with the line tool that I like a lot is so I can click and hold. So my pen is still holding down. And if I hold down command on a Mac and move it that way, I can curve the line. And you can see there's a little bit of a gap. And so if you want to adjust that, you go to the contour editor and you can use the contour editor to adjust pencil lines if you're using pencil lines down the road. And I can just click on this. And if I want this to snap to the point, you can see I'm kind of clicking and hold it. I can kind of approximate it, but it's not snapping right now. Again, I'm under the contour editor, that white select tool. If I click on the magnet and click and hold, it'll snap to the edge just like that. Okay, so I just have my three drawings. And so you can imagine these are different components of your character. And I'll click on that all that work right there. And then just copy the line art down to the color art using this button. So I'll click on that, go down to the color art. And I'll just go left to right to kind of show you a couple of different techniques. And so you're going to need all these techniques that I'm going to show you here. So just, you know, stick around for a minute. So I have gradient and I'll go to the paint bucket tool. And if I click that in, it will paint bucket in. And you can see it's going from red to left, um, turquoise to the right. And if I want to adjust this, it's under, it's hidden underneath the contour editor. So if you just go to the very bottom to this one, it's called edit gradient texture. I'll click there. And it doesn't look like anything's happening right now. But if I click on the color, you'll see this little bar will show up. And so the way this bar shows up, there's a, a few different controls. 
So I'll start with the middle control. So this middle control moves it right there. So you see it went all red right there. So you can just move this control. And this is, this is a really simple intuitive control, by the way. If I click right here, I can rotate it. So I can have it go from top to bottom. And if I want to change the scale of things, I can just click right here and just click and drag up, click and drag down. And that's the gradient editor. Okay. And so let's say I want to fill in this circle and notice this will, this should look pretty different. So if I paint bucket in the circle using the gradient, it'll kind of go back to what it was doing before. So um, there's two ways that you're, you can maneuver around this. So, I mean, first, I guess I could just click and manually move this each time. Um, second is notice when I click on these different areas with the gradient editor selected, I can snap between those two. But something I could do is I can just press Command C on this one for copy, click over here, Command V to paste. And do you see how it jumped back to that original position? And so I have two gradient editors and they're just copied and pasted into the same location right now. And so with this one selected, so again, I'm clicking my mouse right here. And if I click in the middle, I can go back and you know continue to adjust that. But that's one easy way you can copy and paste the location of your gradient so that you're not having to manually move it too much each time that you paint bucket something in. And then, so there's one last technique that I wanna show, which is where you can kind of automate that that, that step I just showed you a little bit. And so you just need to remember two steps for this. So I'll just go back to my gradient and then paint bucket in. And you can see it's right back to that default where it goes left to right. And again, I'm kind of going for more of a vertical thing. So um, there's two steps. I go to the um, select tool and, and make sure you see how nothing is selected right now. And the box looks like this. We're looking for this button. So in order to get that button to appear, I need to be sure to click on the gradient in question. So I'll click on this gradient and I'm going to try to basically store this into memory. So each time I do a new gradient, it'll use that, that gradient editor's location. So step one, uh, select tool. Step two, make sure that the gradient that you want to use is selected. And you're looking for this little button with a check mark. It's a box with a check mark. And if I just hold my cursor still, you'll see this is going to store the color gradient. So I click on that. So the gradient is stored. And the next thing I need to do is just go to the paint bucket tool. And then I'm looking for this button right here. And again, this is under tool properties. And so what that's going to do is it's going to use the stored color gradient. So I'll click right there. And so now hopefully if I, I'll just click on this gradient and delete it. So instead of going from left and right, left to right, now when I paint bucket it in, now when I paint bucket this in, it should, instead of going left to right, it'll use that gradient location that I used right there.